Hi, this is Josh from Over the Shoulder Coding, where I help you prepare for software engineering interviews by guiding you through solving real problems. In this series, I will walk you through HackerRank's 30 Days of Code Challenge day by day. After this video, please fill out my survey to help give me feedback for this channel. Today, we're learning about runtime. Runtime refers to the general efficiency of an algorithm, and it is usually described in terms of worst case scenarios. For example, if you are searching for a book on an unsorted bookshelf, the worst case scenario would be that you search the entire bookshelf and the last book you look at is the one you're looking for. It could happen that the first book or any book you look at before the last book is the one you are looking for, but when the computer scientists refer to big O notation, we talk about the worst case runtime. Why does it matter? The main reason is that we want to know how much slower a program or algorithm gets when the size of the input increases. We write this as a function of the input's n or O of n. A program whose runtime does not vary with the size of the inputs is called a constant time method, or O of 1, since the runtime is not a function of the inputs. This usually is a simple function, like reading a single value. A function that grows at the same rate with the size of the inputs is a linear function, or O of n. An example of this is finding the largest number in an unsorted array you need to check all values in the unsorted array to make sure that you have found the largest value. I'm just barely scratching the surface here. Let me know in the comment section down below if you want me to cover runtime in more depth in another video. Now let's get back to today's task. We want to determine whether a number n is prime or not prime. A prime is a natural number greater than 1 that has no positive divisors other than 1 and itself. The way we will determine whether a number is prime is to iterate through all numbers between 1 and n and see if any of them divide n evenly. If any of the numbers between the two divide n evenly, then n is not a prime. When we have exhausted all numbers between 1 and n and nothing divides n evenly, then we can be sure n is a prime. So let's implement our solution. We know that the first line of the input is going to contain an integer t. The number of test cases. Each of the t subsequent lines contains an integer n that we will test for primality. We will then print prime or not prime on a new line. HackerRank did not help us out in this challenge, so we will have to interpret the inputs first. We will read in t into our number of test cases variable. For each of the test cases, we will read in their value as n. And for the time being, we will just print it out to make sure that we are handling the input correctly. All right, so we're getting three test cases, 12, five, and seven, and we also output 12, five, and seven, so we know we're reading the input correctly. So now that we're handling it correctly, let's make our isPrime method. And it'll take an input n. And right now, let's just leave it. And uh, if we determine that a number is prime through this method, we will print prime. Otherwise, we will print not prime. Now let's get to the meat of today's problem. How do we determine if a number is prime? We know that if a number is less than or equal to one, it is not prime. So for those cases, we can return false. I know HackerRank wants us to find an optimized solution for finding whether a number is prime or not. 
but let's try the brute force method first because it is simpler to understand and code. Whether you are interviewing or making a production system, go with the simpler solution first. Don't jump in and go for the hyper-optimized solution immediately, especially when it is more complex to code and for others to understand. A bug in a complex solution is way harder to debug, is way harder to debug than a bug in a simple solution. So let's use the brute force solution for testing all numbers between 1 and n exclusive to see if there are any other divisors. For i in range 2 to n, if n modulo i is equal to 0, return false. So if i divides n evenly, that means i is divisor of n, and we know n is not prime. Otherwise, after the for loop, we will return true. Okay, let's see if this works. Great, the brute force solution works. So, how do we make this run in O square root of n? Well, for every divisor of n less than the square root of n, we know that there must be a matching divisor greater than the square root of n that will multiply with it to make n. Take 10 for example. The square root of 10 is 3 something. 2 is the divisor of 10 below the square root of 3. And it has a match as 5 above the square root of 10 that it multiplies with in order to make 10. Now let's test the faster solution of only the numbers less than the square root of n. From that, we need to import the math package to use the square root function. After we test if n is less than or equal to 1, we will get the square root of n with the math square root function and store it in a variable. At this point, we can check if the square root of n is an integer. If it is, then it's a divisor of n, and we can exit early and return false. Otherwise, we're simply going to reduce the range of numbers we check to be between 1 and the square root of n uh, exclusive. So we're going to convert n to an integer, or the square root of n to an integer. And in case it rounds down when casting, we'll add 1. Let's see if it works. Looks good. Let's submit it and see how we did. Awesome. Give me a thumbs up for an optimized solution. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to fill out the survey below to help give me feedback. Make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you will know when I post the next video. If you missed the previous video, you can click here to review it or click here to view the full HackerRank 30 Days of Code Challenge playlist. If you have any suggestions or feedback, please comment down below. Thanks, and I'll see you later.